I'm excited for tonight. I love this time of year. We're starting a brand new three-week series called Hope, which one is exciting because it's a Christmas uh, series, and then also it's exciting because we are going to have church three weeks in a row. How exciting is that? So I'm excited. Uh, be December 6th, 13th, and 20th. Mark your calendars uh, for that. And I, I just love hope. We are in the business of hope. So like if someone doesn't know Jesus Christ, uh, we have the hope they need. That, that I believe God has created every single person in a way where if they do not have a relationship with him, there's something missing in their life. That is why they have, why am I here? Is there more to life? Is there meaning and purpose? And I believe it's because God created every single one of us in a way that if we do not have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, there is a void. There is something missing. And we have the hope that everybody needs. And if you have given your life to Jesus Christ, then that means you have signed up to be a hope dealer. Delivering the message of hope. I shared this stat a few weeks ago, and I, I was just thinking about it this week in my prayer time, but George Barna Research, uh, they, they predict, and they do a lot of different you know, research and uh, they, a lot of resource trying to help you know, business church and all that stuff, but they predict one out of every five churches in the next 18 months, they're going to have to close their doors because they just won't have the people or resources to stay open. And I was thinking about that, and I, I thought, I, I feel like not all churches, every spot might be different, but a lot of churches in this season that might fit into that category are going to be churches that have lost their why. You know, that we're not just gathering together to, to gather together. There's a reason to reach those who don't know Jesus and to help grow those who who do. And I feel like this is just such an important season, whether you're here in person or you're watching online. Because the statistics say this that more people will have committed suicide between Thanksgiving and Christmas than all the other 11 months combined. Just think about that. More people between Thanksgiving and Christmas than all the other 11 months combined. And I can only imagine what this year will be like with all of that on the rise already before we've hit the holiday season. And I think in this season what happens is it's like a magnifying glass. To whatever problems we have, it's magnified during this season. That if you are having financial problems during this season, it puts a magnifying glass to remind you of the financial problems that you are having. If you've lost someone you love, whether it was five years ago or this year, it is a reminder to you that they are not going to be there on this Christmas holiday season, and it's a magnifying glass. If you're feeling lonely or isolated, it's a magnifying glass. And I just thought of this as I was praying this week, this word social distancing, which I think is a horrible word because it's not how the Lord has called us to live. And this is not a statement like, should I be close to someone, not close to someone? I'm just saying that we are called to be in relationship, whether you don't want to be in relationship, right, like close to someone in person, but you're on the phone, in contact, texting, all of that. I'm just saying God never, he said what? I created man, it's not good for man to be alone. And so uh, it's not a statement on like, don't be away from someone, whatever. I'm just trying to say like, and it's magnified, if you're having health problems, it's magnified in this season. And so I just think this series is important, bringing a message of hope. And I want to bring it in a little bit of a different way, meaning our, our Christmas service on December 20th will be more of a normal message of hope. But I, I want to look at Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. And here's what it says. It says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, so you can just leave that verse up there because I want to look at it. It says what? I pray that God, who is the source of hope. So where does our hope come from? Where's the source? It's from God. Another translation says the God of hope. Okay, that is who he is. He says what? He wants to fill us with joy and peace. He is our hope. He wants to fill us with joy and peace because you trust in him. Okay, so joy, I want you to think of this. 
God wants to fill us with joy. Joy is not an emotion. It's not based on our circumstance. Happy is based on our circumstance. Some of us today were happy because the Vikings kicked that field goal at the end of the game and the Vikings won. You were happy last week because normally the Vikings don't come back miraculously and they won. That's right, two, I mean, they have been winning. At the start of the season, you were sad because they start, what were they, like one in five? And now they're six and six. That's based on circumstance how you feel. You're happy when you walk into work and they say, hey, we're going to give you a raise. You got to, I'm happy. You're sad when you walk into work and they say, hey, we're going to downsize and you're not on the list. And so they're going to transition you out. And so that joy is not based on circumstance. It's not based on whether the Vikings win, don't win, job, not job. Joy is, uh, it's not based on, it's just, it's be through our relationship, our hope through him that he wants to fill us with joy, that we can have joy whether I walk out losing my job or I get a raise, whether the Vikings win or they lose, it, it, it's joy. Then it says he wants to give us peace. Peace, again, is not based on circumstance. That the Bible says he wants to give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. So when, you, you, you know, you, people don't understand, how, how, in it, how do you just have peace right now? Like, you just seem good. You know, you, you have peace, and it's because it's not based on our circumstance. He wants to fill us up with joy and with peace. Now, uh, the word hope there, I love this definition. It was a joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. It's a, joy, it's a confident expectation of where I'm going to be. I, I know I have this eternal perspective. I'm confident uh, in that. And so with that, he gives us what? Joy and peace. Uh, I thought this was interesting. I just felt like when I was studying this, I should look up what is the opposite of joy? What is the opposite of peace? And this is as I was studying, I just thought this was interesting. It said this, the opposite of joy is unbelief. I said, huh, that's not what I was thinking. But you think about it, when we trust the Lord, we're confident expectation in him, we have joy because I'm confident in where I'm going to go. I'm confident that this is not my home. I, I, I'm right with God. I'm good. Uh, but when I don't, I, the opposite is unbelief. I, now I have doubt and confusion and all of that. The opposite of peace is noise, hostility, discord, uh, and strife. And so as a pastor, I, I've seen both sides. I, I've seen both sides from families. Whether they, they trust, they don't trust. Uh, I've been on both sides. As a man of God, I've been on both sides. And so um, I'll never forget this lady in Texas. And she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And you would just think her, she was an older lady. She went through the whole process of the chemo, lost, you know, had no hair. Uh, went just, you could just see the whole, how it took a toll on her physical. But man, I've never been around someone that had so much like life. And excitement and the way she talked and the way, I mean, it motivated and challenged. And she just had this attitude that's like, God's got this. I'm good. I'm trusting the Lord. He's going to get, he's going to get me through this. He's got a purpose for my life. And even if he doesn't, guess what? I know where I'm going. It's like, I think it was Paul. It's like, hey, I would rather actually be up there with the Lord, but hey, it's better that I stay down here for people because I still got work to do. And it was just motivating. Like it was so Cool, and so I want to challenge us this. You know, we want to have hope, and tonight's message is that, that, sec, that last part of that middle point is just because you trust him. And I want to talk about because you trust him. And I, I felt like the Lord gave me a few things as I was just praying and going over it today. I felt like I was supposed to add a couple things to it, and so I'm not going to get through this whole message. I'm just going to look at the first two points, and then um, you'll probably be tired of me speaking, and it'll be time to move on. But... Uh, kind of cool, though, the, the work that I already put into it, I could just use next week. How about that, you know? So thank you, Lord. But hey, uh, two things. Um, first one is this, because you trust him. I just really felt like these two points, and like I said, I felt like God just kind of added some stuff for tonight. So here's the first one, to rediscover your why. To rediscover your why. I meet a lot of people who walk into church and they have baggage. And I smile because that's all of us. We walk into church and we have baggage. We have stuff that has happened to us, maybe in our, 
our upbringing. We've had stuff that has happened to us at another church and experience, and it hurt us. And, it, and I got my own stuff that I'm working through. And I feel like what can happen sometimes, sadly, is past experience or hurt uh, causes people to lose their passion and their why. They, they forget. I'll never forget a pastor, and he, uh, he, had this, he had a heart attack, and he was just kind of sharing how he uh, was at the doctor. This was afterwards. He's getting better, and the doctor said this. I, I want you to start walking. I, you don't need to be running. You're not healthy enough to run, but you're not going to sit around and do nothing. And he said in that instant, I felt like the Lord just spoke to me that many times people walk into church and they're hurt or something has happened and they just, I'm going to come and be healed. Yes, that's exactly what we want, but it's not to sit around and do nothing. It might not be, hey, be on the teaching team, lead in worship, but it might be, hey, do something. Move forward in this relationship. And, and I've seen so many times like people can be bitter, like many are not in church because they're bitter towards the church because something has happened. They're cynical. Or, and many times what can happen for us is we just lose our why. We lose our passion. We lose our, our purpose. But when I talk about lose our why and I talk about passion, I want you to put in parentheses the word purpose. I just want you to think of purpose. Because we can have passion, but we also got to be in alignment with him and purpose. I was passionate about basketball. I loved basketball. I, I grew up, man, when other kids were playing, like, you know, video games, I was, like, practicing. And I was, I was all right. I wasn't horrible. And uh, now that I'm, like, 20 years past that season, I don't even like basketball. I don't like to play. I don't like to watch it. It's not even a sport I care much about. I've lost my passion for it, and that's okay. So when I talk about why and passion, there's also a purpose. There's a God-given design purpose uh, for us. And so here's what I want you to think of. I want to take us back on a trip uh, memory lane. I want you to think of this. When was the moment that you gave your life to Jesus? Was it at youth camp? When they called people up to the front and it was in that moment? Was it at home, at a hotel, reading the word? Was it at a church service where you raised your hand? And I, I mean... Do you remember what it was like? Do you remember that moment where you started that relationship with him and how it, it was like you were on fire, you were hungry, you were excited, you wanted, it, it was like, you know, you wanted to be back at church, you wanted to be around people, you wanted to do something for the Lord. And sometimes what can happen is over time we, we lose that same hunger, we lose that same passion. We, we start becoming now more consumeristic or about me instead of about him. I want you to think of this, passion. So one of our values here are we are family, and that's partly because I believe that relationship's important. Uh, it's been a struggle in this uh, pandemic season to figure all that out. Um, but I want you to picture this. So uh, passion is like a bucket with holes. And there are moments where you probably remember you gave your life to Jesus. You were in a church service and the worship, the message and the altar response at the end. In life group as you sat around and shared with other guys or girls and, and, and whatever. And you were so filled and hungry and excited. And guess what? Passion, purpose. It has holes. And it leaks. And it's just part of life. That's why, that's why it's so important that we're in community. That's why it's so important that we're consistently with church. So important that we're in God's word. So important in prayer. Because it's so easy for that to leak. And if we don't fill it back up, then we start to not understand our, our why. I really do believe that God wants to raise up men and women still that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Doing something awesome for his Kingdom And Matthew 5.13 just talks about the spiritual condition of a person that loses its salt. And it talks about it becomes ineffective and no longer serves a purpose. And uh, when our passion and our purpose, it has to be in alignment to him. His way, reaching those who don't know the Lord, dispelling darkness, of, advancing his kingdom. And, and so uh, I'm going to skip a little bit of this, but I'll, I'll just say this. It has to be focused on him. 
You could be passionate about sports, but have no purpose. And so everything's about sports. Or you could be in alignment with him and be passionate about sports, but trying to utilize that to advance his kingdom. I I love like even getting around like teenagers. I was like, hey, you could be passionate about video games. You can play video games all day long and do nothing for God. Or you can be passionate about video games and invite all your friends over to play as you teach God's word, as you pray, as you share the faith. Uh, You know, so it's like, Hey, maybe it's something God put it to play those video games, or maybe it's, you know, purpose. Revelation chapter 2, verses 3 through 5 says this, You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this one thing against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. So here's our first point, my challenge. Rediscover your why. If you're here tonight and you've lost the why, you've lost the passion, I just encourage you to go into that verse and say, go back to your first love. Go back into that moment where you just, you want to spend time with him and you want to be in his word and you want to learn and you want to do something awesome for God. And hey, we've all been there before. Why? Because our why and our passion, our purpose, it leaks out of the bucket. and We've got to constantly be refilled. And I can't only imagine in this season, over the last six months of everything that we've endured and faced and gone through, that how it's so easy as we're working from home, we're stuck at home, there's nowhere to go, I just want to take my kids somewhere, or whatever, that we just start losing our purpose and our why. And it starts to just get wear down on us. And maybe you're here tonight and you got an empty bucket. You got an empty bucket. He's got to be refilled. You got to be back in his presence where it fills you back up and, and you rediscover the why. When we lose the why, we become more about us. My time, my resources, my energy, me, 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 me. If you remember when I gave my life to Jesus at youth camp, I can tell you this. At that moment, I'm like, God, here I am. Everything I have is yours. Everything I want. God, use me. I just want to do something awesome for you. Send me anywhere but the mission field, but I'll go there if you want. But that's not my heart. You know, I love missionaries, but I don't want to be a missionary. But I will go if you want. And then when it comes on me, it's like, God, don't even ask because I won't do it. <laughs> right? So we've lost our why. If that's you and your bucket's empty, man, to be refilled and to be in his presence where it fills us back up. The second thing I just felt like as we trust him is to take out our trash. Take out our trash. Honestly, keeping trash is comfortable. It's easy. It's what we know. But we've got to take it out. So I was thinking about this point, and uh, my wife and I, we actually rented a little farmhouse rental. You know, and it's, uh, some of you have been there. If you haven't, we'd love to have you over at some point. And uh, when we moved in, They told us this, uh, that if you want, we have a dumpster that's down this property over here that you can use for free. And so you don't have to pay for trash. And I'm super cheap. I was like, sweet, you know. And then you take out the trash. You walk out your door, down your yard, into their yard, down the hill, over here, past their parking lot, to their dumpster. And we go through a lot of trash. I got me, my wife, and my three boys, a lot of trash. And then we have people over a lot, a lot of trash. Plus we do the church stuff. And we're like if we need coffee or whatever, we order stuff and, you know, the boxes and all it piles up and more trash. And I'm taking it over and I'm taking it over and I'm like, I don't know if I want to do free no more. I just pay for it. I don't really. And then it gets cold in the snow. And so here's what we started doing. Take the trash out the front. And I set it by the door. I'll get to it later. And then the second bag. And then the third bag. And that's just one day. What's going on here? And then the neighbor's dog comes over. And he rips a hole and gets into our stuff. And now all this, it's everywhere. And it's like, well, it's supposed to be easy. And this is so much work. I did, I, hey, $15 a month 
hey, I'm just going to pay that. I don't want to have to walk over in the snow, cold, all that. But I say all that because here's why. It's so easy for us to not take out our trash. And we just set it to the side. I'll get to it later. And it just starts to pile up. And it just starts to pile up. I think one of the biggest things to hindering us having hope and trust in God as he fills us with joy and peace is to keep sin and trash in our life. Now, I want to say this. So I was praying through this, and I just felt like this was so important to communicate. God forgives us of our sin. No matter who you are, what you've done, where you've been, in a moment, in an instant, The sin could be removed from your life as far as the east is from the west. But when I'm talking about trash, I'm really more talking about the sanctification process in our life. The habits, the ways of thinking that that you think, say, let's just say you're 30 years old. Okay, for some of us, I wish I was back to 30. But uh, think of if you were 30 years old, you gave your life to Jesus, all the habits that have been accumulated in those times. Do you think it just goes away because you give your life to Jesus? Do you think all the things that your parents taught you, maybe that wasn't even healthy, it just goes, no, no. Our sin can be forgiven, but there's also a sanctification process, a way of thinking. We want to learn God's way of thinking. We want to, we want to grow. We want to change habits and different things like that. And so I, I just thought, like, so my house, my trash gets picked up once a week, and it's on Monday, tomorrow. My trash is full right now. Why? Because we were renting this place out. We just did a deep cleaning. They're not paying for trash service since they're not meeting here, so I took it home. We got our stuff. It's, I, I can't wait till like month, tomorrow. They're going to empty the trash can. If I forget to take it out or they don't come, that's going to be a smelly week because it's got no room. I will take it down to the neighbors, so I do have that, that out. Um, but we, when we talk about taking out our trash, it's got to be on a, a regular basis. We're going through our lives and we're, we're seeing, is there anything in here? We talked about this two weeks ago. Self-will over God's will. I, I think when we think of trash, we just go to the top ten commandments, you know, the ten commandments. I didn't murder anyone this week. Didn't commit adultery. Okay, well, I, I'm good. No, no, no. Anytime we choose to do self-will over God's will, we start developing stuff in our life. Like, you could even talk about the acts of love. The Holy Spirit says to give $30 and you give 10. Or you give 50. Sometimes we think by doing more because it sounds better. No, no, no. That's not what he said. Self-will over God's will. If you want to come up. What can happen is that sin habits bad trash kind of piles up it clogs the pipeline of what God wants to do in our life and by spending time in his presence being in his word praying fasting it's like spiritual draino to that pipeline and it kind of cleans it out Psalms 51 verse 10 through 12 says this it says create in me a pure heart O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Create in me a pure heart. Oh God. Gotta take out our trash. And uh, as I was praying, I just felt like today, this was one of the things I felt like God just put on my heart to add. And um, so I hope it comes across well. Didn't have a lot of time to go over it. So I I follow different churches and pastors, and I have different on my podcast I listen to. I got different worship stuff I listen to, and I I, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Hillsong. I love Hillsong worship, and uh, I don't really follow much teachings from them, Uh, not anything bad against them. I just, you only have so much time to listen to people, and I just didn't choose them, so sorry. Uh, But... uh, they're a pretty large church based out of Australia, and uh, they have a campus in New York. And I, you may be not familiar with this, and uh, maybe you are. So the guy that is the campus pastor in the New York uh, campus 
um, has just been released from that church because of, they just listed a few things, you know, untrustworthiness, uh, unfaithfulness, and stuff like that. And so then you do research, try to figure it out, you know, some stuff, and it's kind of all come out in the open that uh, he had an affair for the last five and a half months. He's been having an affair. And uh, he's a pretty, actually, one of the, what they call celebrity pastors, which I don't really actually believe there's a such thing as celebrity pastor, You're, but I don't need to get into all that. So um, for the last five and a half months. And at first, man, I'll tell you this, I was so frustrated. <laughs> I was like, that's, oh, when someone does something like that, it, it makes this tainted view for so many people. And I was just, I was kind of mad and I was so frustrated and I was just like, for five and a half months, the guy has been a pastor and also having like this girl on the side and cheating on his wife and then lying to the, the big church and the team and all this stuff and then all this stuff hit the fan and this came out. So I was just frustrated and here's kind of why I even share that. Because as I was praying, I felt like the Lord said this, it can happen to any one of us. It can happen to any one of us. That when you start setting trash out your door, start setting it to the side and not taking care of it on a weekly basis and not checking your heart and not getting your heart right when it's out of alignment and it just starts to pile up, guess what? It stinks in your house, but it's become normal to you. I got three cats. I've, I'm so shocked to say that because I hate cats. I've never wanted a cat in my life. I'm allergic to them and I can't stand cats. And then I love these little three guys. We got them when they were little. And so therefore, they haven't tried to bite me and attack me like all the other cats on this planet. That they, they just, they, <sighs> these are really nice. And it's kind of weird. I take allergy medicine, but, uh, and they, I guess they get their fur everywhere and stuff, but I don't know what it is. Sometimes I don't take it. It's, it hasn't really bothered me anymore. At first, the very first day we got them, I'm telling you, my eyes were like bloodshot. You would think I was smoking some crazy stuff if you can. I mean, they were bloodshot. I could not see. And I was like uh, taking all kinds. I had to go buy drops for my eyes and all this kind of stuff. And then I'm complaining to my wife. These outdoor cats sure are inside a lot. You know, like, I, I just have guess, become accustomed. I, 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 in my mind, I just thought maybe they're not, there's no allergies with these cats anymore. And then Jay comes over, who's doing kids. And by the way, doing an awesome job with kids. I can't even tell you how many times my kids are like, is it church day yet? Is it church day yet? And I'm like, no, why? Oh, you love going so much. You keep asking. He comes over. He's allergic to cats. And the dude can't see. He can't breathe. I'm like, here's medicine. Here's my eye drops. Here's everything. I've just gotten used to it. I'm telling you what can happen is we just get used to it. And we start becoming one of those bitter, cynical, selfish people. There's a lot of them in this church world. And, and when's the last time we just got alone with God in his presence and, and we just cleaned out our heart, created a pure heart in me, God? Help, help me to rediscover my why, my purpose. Help me to have a pure heart and to be cleaned out and to let go of all this stuff. So what I want to do tonight is we're going to go into a time of worship. Just take a few minutes again. We're going to worship the Lord. I really want to challenge you. Don't just sing the songs. Don't just look at the screen and sing the words, but like in your heart, have a heart connection with his presence. In your heart, if it's the first point, the whole thing was for you, it's because you've lost your passion. You need to be filled back up in your why, where it says, hey, look, for me, I love church planning because you're focused on reaching lost people, you know? Like, you're fo you gotta grow. Like, we can't just do church, like, you know, for the next 50 years. We gotta move forward. And I love that, but it, it alarms me sometimes when people, and it, it might not be this spot for you, that's okay, God has something else, but it just alarms me sometimes people come in and the only question they wanna know is, what do you have for me? What do you have for me? Like, what do you offer to me? Like, what, me, 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 me. Like, but you haven't even asked the mission. Like, do you have any heart to use your gifts, your talents, your resources to see us advance God's kingdom? Or is everything about you? And we just need to get away in God's presence and rediscover our why. That God, when he created you, there was unique talents and gifts he put inside of you that only you can do. 
when he created me, it had nothing to do with worship and music. He forgot, like, because I, I just I have no talent there. But you have talent somewhere. Your why. One of the biggest things of us, destro- like losing hope and joy and peace and all that is sin. Maybe there's stuff in your life you just need to get away with him. You just need to say, God, I'm sorry. Clean me out. Purify me. Create in me a pure heart. So I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet. And we're just going to take a few moments and we're going to worship him. God, I invite your spirit here tonight. And I just pray right now that, God, your presence would be here. God, we're not just doing songs at the end of church because that's what we're supposed to do. We're doing a couple worship songs at the end of church because we want our hearts to align with you and we want to fill your presence and we want to be full of life and we want to be have an encounter with you so God we block out all the noise all the chaos of what's going on in our society and our world God we, we take everything you know kind of shift it away you know, what's happening at work and at home and whatever it is and we just focus in on you God we don't want to just sing songs we want to have an encounter with your presence And so, God, I just invite your Holy Spirit to be in this place. So we worship you, Lord, in the name of Jesus.